Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage. Now we are going to get to the haul video, but I had two things that I wanted to say real quickly. The first thing is I am launching a new product. I'll tell you about that in just a bit. But if you don't wanna hear about the product, at least know this before you watch the haul video. It was a very gloomy day. I, have, I had no energy. I, I can see that in the video. Hopefully you still enjoy the video, the haul video. I just had to get it done. I try not to film on gloomy days, days that are going to really make me not feel great. If it's gray and there's no sun, I just can hardly function. It's a sad, sad thing. <laughs> but on a more enlightening and popular note, I am launching this wonderful product right here. Super excited for it. It is a weekly planner in the Art Deco style. Very fun, I am super happy about this. It is a perpetual tear off calendar. Tear off because you can tear off each page when you're done with it. So you could tear it off, put it on your refrigerator, whatever. But it's perpetual because you can write in right here the week that you are currently in. So if you don't wanna use it on a specific week, just don't use it. But that's the great thing about this. So there are 53 pages. It comes with all 53 weeks of the year. That's a week per page. And I just think it's a wonderful item. I'm super excited. This is something that I know I need in my life because I am always forgetting things and I need to write them down. And you can also track your water and your exercise by filling in these little bubbles on the side here. So that's a really fun thing. And then also there's a, sec a section down below here for your notes. So if you have any extra weekly notes, but there's lots of space to write in. If you'd like to order a weekly planner, they are currently on my website right now, realniftyvintage.com, and they are $12.50 with shipping included. Now, let's go to the haul. First thing up is this cracker tin. It's a premium cracker saltine tin that, you know, they're very popular and they're not hard to find, but they do sell. So I went ahead and bought this one from a fellow reseller. He was closing down his two spaces at the same antique mall that I rent in. And so they were doing 75% off. I believe this was $13 with 75% off. So I'll go ahead and put this in my booth for like $13 and I'll make up that 75% markup. So that's pretty good. Just a nice little easy thing. Um, and I don't have problems selling those. The other thing that I bought, the only other thing that I bought was this assor large assortment of cookie cutters. This was $20 originally, 75% off, so that's like five bucks. So uh, that's not a bad price for me because what I'm gonna do is actually uh, sell each one of these for about $1.95 in my booth, separately, not, a, not like this. And I have been selling cookie cutters that way and they sell pretty easily. So there's like at least 20 cookie cutters in here. So what is this, like $40 worth of cutters and I paid five? So I recently went up north and the clock is going bonkers. Okay, good. It's done. So I recently went up north with Ashley. She's a fellow YouTuber. And I found a marmalade jar that I ended, I ended up breaking it. But um, I think I paid $2 for that one. It was a sad day. Sad, sad five minutes. Anyways, I found this one here for $2.50. I had the spoon at home. And I've got, got to give a shout out to a subscriber who sent me like I think six spoons or something, these uh, ceramic spoons. So oftentimes I'll come across these marmalade jars. Actually, this one was $2, not five, not $2.50. Um, so I'll come across these marmalade containers. This one actually says it right there. And they will not have spoons with them, which is obviously normal that you lose the spoons. So um, yeah, I. I was able to get some of these from a subscriber, which is really good. So now I can find things like this and feel comfortable buying them and just add the spoon. So I've got these ceramic spoons now. So that is a ready to go item. I'll put that on Etsy. This one here I paid $2 for and I will sell it for probably around 16 or $18 with free shipping, shipping included. So that's cool. And it is a made in Japan type of item. Um, I'm gonna assume on this one that it's probably, well, I don't know. It could be the 30s, it could be the, yeah, it could be the 30s. The It's in really good condition, that's kind of why I'm confused. There's minimal, minimal crazing to the glaze. So, yeah, I'm not sure.
Wow. It could have also had a little handle too. I'm not sure. Could have had one of those like a handle like I'm about to show you, like this one. Okay, well since I've got it, I'll show you this one. This is actually something I bought for myself on eBay. It is a Fenton in the Big Cookie black depression glass. This is glass, not ceramic. And I do collect black glass whenever I find something that fancies my interest or piques my interest. This one fit the bill. So I have been wanting one of these ever since I saw it, saw it over here at a antique mall. And the one over here does not have the handle. I don't believe. No, it doesn't. And they want $135 for it. This one popped on eBay for $80 with free shipping, shipping included. So I bought it right away as soon as it came up and there's no real issues at all with it. No chips or cracks to the lid. I just noticed a little flea bite here that they didn't note it. They didn't note in the description, but it's so small. In fact, it's going to be hard to, I actually have a, a light going on right now. So it's kind of hard to, the, the, it's really like shadowy. It's a very, very overcast day and the overhead doesn't work very well. So I don't know. I'm a little upset about that. It's all right. But what's great about this is it comes with the handle and that's fantastic. And the handle in this case is very in, like in very good shape. So I'm really, really excited all around. Fenton, probably the twenties era, twenties, early thirties. Very cool. It's a biscuit jar or a cookie jar. And I'm really excited about that one. I'll hang on to that. It'll go on my counter. Don't know if I'll put anything in it because I, I just go right through cookies. They, they can't last around here. So I try not to buy them, but Aaron buys cookies. But eh. um, what's in front of me here, I'll get out of my way because it's kind of annoying. It is some Azerite. And by, they're by Anchor Glass Fire King. Okay. So Anchor Glass is the parent company. Fire King is the sub company, the division or the brand. And what makes a Fire King product is the fact that it's, you could put it over the stove, you can put it in the oven. It's, it's heat resistant. So, uh, yeah, it mimics like milk glass in that way. It's kind of like an opal glass, but it's this Azerite, it's blue tinted and you can sort of see through it. But this is in the charm pattern and I bought quite a number of these products here. I am not with it today. The weather is making me very drowsy. Okay, so I was able to get four cups and saucers. I've got the saucers right there, and then I have the four, actually there's six saucers in this case, so I'm not sure about that, but there's six. The set of six cups and saucers were, well, $2 for the stack of saucers, and then 50 cents for each of, for each of those. So there's that. And then the other part of the set is the plates. These are the luncheon plates and there's four of those. So technically it's a set of four all around. And so what is that total? It's like six, just under $7. And I'll be able to resell the entire set as a set for about 35 plus shipping. So that's really fun. By the way, this pattern was made in the early fifties, like 50, 1950 to 56, somewhere in there. So pretty cool. I was able to find those at a goodwill that honestly I stopped in and I didn't know I was going to be able to find anything because usually I don't at that particular goodwill. So I was happy about that. While I was in Rockford, Illinois, I went to an antique mall. I only bought a few things at that antique mall, but I did get some vintage Halloween. In this case, I bought the wizard uh, scented things. What are they called? Air fresheners is what they're called. Uh, these are kind of collectible. I mean, they're, they're not like extremely hard to find and they're not extremely popular. So that said, you can buy them on eBay for not a lot of money. For some reason, I felt like spending my money that day. So I think I paid like 10 to $12 for each one of these. And the reality is you can probably find them for easily three to $4 on eBay each. As a group, you can get maybe three for 15. So yeah, not my proudest moment, but I was just, I don't know what I was doing. Anyway, this was made in 1989 by Boyle Midway. And I like that they have the paper bottoms to them. 
So I have three of them here and then I have two more in my curio cabinet that I actually did thri thrift uh, legitimately. I think I bought one for a dollar and another for neck, like free or something and in an auction. So that's all right. Uh, these were what I said the price was. <laughs> the other one is this owl here. I bought that one. These are wax, by the way. I don't, I don't think I mentioned that. They're wax and it says not to be eaten, so don't eat it. This one was 1986. And then the other one is this one, really cute, of the, of the ghost in the bag. This one was 1987. How fun. All different years. So I did buy those at that antique mall, I think. Yeah, that was the only thing I bought at that mall. It was. So I also, whenever I was in up north, I was in, I was at a flea market, an, an at night flea market. It started at 4 p.m. and went till 12 p.m. supposedly, but they, a lot of vendors closed up early. Anyways, this was a piece of Balik that I found on a 50% off table. So it was originally marked $45. So that would have been $22.50 and I asked if he would do $20 and he said yes. So that was good. I got this nice piece of Balik. It has like an open lace top to it in the basket, like a basket weave kind of texture. This is the sixth mark. It's, the, it's green. It was probably their longest running mark for Balik. Okay, it's not one to focus and I don't have the energy. So... <laughs> There we are. That's gonna go in my collection. So while I was at, uh, also at that same place, I was able to buy this really fun, this is also for me not to resell, it's a spoon rest. I don't know who made it, it reminds me a lot of Poppy Trail, uh, Poppy Trail, by Metlocks. But uh, I don't think it is them. If it was Metlocks, all these like little things here would be brown and the leaves aren't quite right either for Metlocks. So I just thought it was cute and I collect the Franciscan Ivy. There's what Franciscan Ivy leaves look like, so it's different, not at all the same. But for $3, it was originally four, I asked if they would do three, they said yes. For $3, I thought it was a great little item and you can hang it, so I might just hang it on the wall because I don't like things on my counters. Well, I don't like things on my walls either, but I gotta pick one, so. I don't know. The last thing that I got at that nighttime flea market is this multi-purpose blanket. And this was $3, no, $4. This was $4, but I'm assume, I'm just saying now to myself that it's $6 because I broke that other thing, which was $2. So this was $6, let's call it. I'm gonna sell it for about $40 with shipping included, but it's a wonderful, they're saying it's, uh, it says Navajo. That's the, or no, it's the Mohawk. Okay, it's the Mohawk blanket, and it is made by Owen, Owen, Charles D. Owen Manufacturing of North Carolina, and it is polyester, 100%. So it looks like it's never been used because it's in the original packaging. So that's actually gonna be a very good benefit for myself whenever I go to resell it. So that's cool. That'll be on Etsy, hopefully sooner rather than later. Okay, and then recently I was at a, I thought there was something else I bought at that mall. Darn. Hmm. Well, I was at an uh, antique mall recently with Aaron, so that was its own video. Uh, and I didn't get a lot, so I just kind of threw it into this one. But we have here a little dresser valet. Uh, it's of this really cute dog, and it was only $4. I, I don't know if that was a typo or if they just didn't, they just wanted to get rid of it or what, but $4 for this, I'm gonna put probably $30 plus shipping. So like, let's call it $38 with free shipping. I think, I don't know. It's just very unique. I've, I've definitely never seen one like this before. So I thought I'd buy it, really cute. Hold your wallet, your keys, your toilet paper. <laughs> but there it is. Uh, the last thing that I got at that mall was this wonderful swung glass vase. I'm gonna keep this one for myself. It's in the bittersweet pattern. This one has this like little things on it, like little textured moments happening right on the bottom and then it fades up. And then we have like, a tangerine outline up here. 
So it's pretty, it's, it's very Halloween. That's why I bought it. I think I paid $14 for it. Not the cheapest, but it's cute. I like the size of it. Um, we're on 14 minutes. Let's do a few more. I wasn't gonna do them in this video, but I'll just do it. So I was recently at a rummage sale. My throat hurts. So I did not research this yet. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's a box purse and I bought it from a fellow reseller uh, here locally. He goes to uh, sales and he buys books. That's his thing, he likes books. And like ephemera and old kind of old things. Stuff like this is not his, not his jam at all. I paid a dollar for this from him. And actually a lot of times he'll buy things at auctions for a specific thing and then hang on to it and then just resubmit it to another auction company to like make, try to make money on it, yeah. So there's that. But um, we ran into him when we were at another sale and he said, you know, if you want to come over to my house, you can. So Barb and I, I think Garen was along too. Yeah, Aaron was there too. <laughs> so this is a box purse and it is, at, it says jewel drops on it. So there it is. I, again, I'm not sure of the value. I just thought it was cute. And I do need to wash it still. Let's open it up. Okay, it's just a box. Looks like pine or something. So, oh, and there's a mirror. Cool, so you can look at yourself. So there's that, it's a box. And it's very 70s looking, or early 80s to me. Original box bag by Collins of Texas. And there's like a leaping horse. So we'll see what this is doing online. I have no clue, but for a dollar, I felt like I could not go wrong. And it's just very, very cool. Yeah, I like that. The other thing that I bought from him for a dollar was this amazing camera. It's a Polaroid Land camera and with the rainbow stripe down it. These are pretty popular. I have sold one in the past. I think it was $30. I'm not sure, I don't remember. I'll insert a screenshot if I can. Uh, it'll go for probably close to that. So yeah, it's a, it, this, is a good, this is a good seller. I'm not sure why. I think it's just the quintessential like, I don't know if this is the 80s or the late 70s, but it's just very retro looking. So probably for millennials, this is something that looks cool on a shelf. But the last thing that I have from him, from that guy, the reseller, is these magazines. Oh, that's heavy. I better just scoot it across. So there are these magazines. And he knows that I like the older magazines from the 40s, 50s. Well, he found these. There's one by Woman's, there's a couple, well, I don't even know actually. So this is a 1953 Woman's Day magazine. There's that one here. I'll have fun looking through these just for the advertisements um, alone, but they're just fun in general. So that's a Woman's Day, 1953. Then there's a Good Housekeeping, 1953. That's probably more on my alley. It's a thick one too. Yeah, I gotta look through those. I can't do it now. And then there's a McCall's. This is... Well, oh, September 1953. There we go. While we were at his house, he also showed us some magazines from 1915. And they were in extraordinary shape that he's gonna keep. He uh, does like stuff like that. I, th I think I paid a dollar for all of these combined. This is Woman's Home Companion, 1952 of March. I wonder if any of these have any Lucy stuff in them. Lucy started in 1952 on TV, so, and she was a hit. Like, you know, TV was everything. You only had like four channels. So everyone knew McCall's, now I wonder. 1953 of August. Very cool. Then there's another Woman's Home Companion, uh, 1955. I don't know if I'm showing you all these. I'm getting kind of entranced by them myself. This is a 1955 Companion. Oh, that's a really cute picture of the girl with the dog and the milk. And the dog, I think I said dog, yeah. And here's a Ladies Home Journal from 1954. That's a really pretty picture. Yeah. And then there's another Ladies Home Journal. That's a really pretty picture too, from 1954 of August. I like that hat a lot. 
So yeah, that's kind of the haul. Um, those are just fun magazines that I'll look through. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.